Landholders and community members across northeastern Tasmania are joining forces with conservation experts to improve water quality and restore native streamside habitat for the benefit of Tasmania's giant freshwater crayfish. My name's Todd Walsh. I have worked with the giant freshwater cray for 25 years. Besides being the largest freshwater crayfish, they're also the largest freshwater invertebrate on the planet. And only found in that northern strip of Tasmania makes them very iconic to the region. So these guys can grow to six and a half kilo. This bloke here is about one and a half, so you're talking four times the weight of this fella here. A big male like this, probably 20, 25 years of age. The Tassie giant freshwater cray can live up to 60 years, we think. So it's, it's surprising to people that you get an animal of this age living in such small creeks in, in a small part of Tasmania. Giant freshwater crayfish were once a common sight um, across the northwest and northeast of Tasmania, but they're now considered vulnerable and endangered across various different legislation. So we know that giant freshwater crayfish really rely on having a clear stream with a rocky bottom that's free of sediment, but also in-stream woody debris and leaf litter that comes from the native overhanging vegetation. Poaching's a massive issue because they take away the brood stock. Uh, an adult female giant freshwater cray is 14 years of age before she can breed and so poachers can go and clean up a half case stretch of river and take all the brood stock out and it'll take 10 to 20 years for that to recover. So taking away your adults decimates the population for generations. Through funding from the Australian Government, NRM North is working with the community to restore a total of 15 kilometres of high priority river reaches across the Pipers, Brid and Bubiala catchments by June 2023. So planting out native streamside vegetation, working with landholders to control streamside weeds, but also excluding livestock from waterways and providing landholders with incentives to provide off-stream stock water sources. We've also got a really strong army of volunteers that come out and, and work with us on ground to help landholders in planting these projects as well. So it's a really strong partnership and a really massive effort on everyone's behalf. Having the support from NRM North has allowed us to do what we wanted to do in terms of fencing off the river and um, improve our rotational grazing. So that assistance with the fencing was really helpful. But also we've just started to notice so many more uh, bugs and birds and, and the, the area is really green and it's a beautiful space to be in as well. So that could lead to opportunities with agritourism so that we could integrate that into other parts of our farm business. In a, in a river like this, if these trees aren't here, slowly but surely this will erode into the, the creek itself. You might have one or two walking through here, but at the moment you've got 10 or 20 walking through. Having these trees go up that population will just expand now and you'll have a population in the hundreds within 20 years time. There's something incredible about putting trees in the ground and knowing that they're gonna be there longer than you're gonna be on the earth. This is the start of something for the future and that's really incredible to be part of that and to do something for the planet that's, that's really gonna leave a legacy.